What's cracking, guys? Bruce Matson here, your host show, Metric Scout Fantasy Football. And today, we're going to go over a rookie mock draft. This one was conducted by CBS Sports. It's posted on their website. Just going to go over it. It's three rounds, and let's see how they are valuing this rookie class. But before we dig into this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every subscription fuels the channel. It gets me motivated to keep helping you out with your rookie drafts, building up your dynasty teams, sharing the info, and obviously, I love keeping you guys entertained. Here we are on CBSSports.com, and we're here to look at this three-round rookie mock draft here by the CBS Sports staff. Drafters on here, some names you may know, some of them I don't even know. Dave Richard, senior fantasy writer, Jack Port, I'm not even going to say it. Maron Berkston, Frank Stanfy, RJ White, Daniel Schreiner, however you say it, George Maselli, Heath Cummings, he's pretty well known. Adam Azer, he's pretty well known. Chris Towers, Ryan Wilson, Jamie Eisenberg, he's pretty well known. So a few, few heavy headers, some other guys that I haven't heard of before, but maybe you have. But let's run through this draft. Three round rookie mock draft here. So in their first round, Seems like it it starts off pretty traditional. Brees Hall as the 101. This came in right after the combine. So, yes, he's going to be the 101. Next player off the board they got here is Garrett Wilson. Then Drake London. Traylon Burks. I'm going to be seeing that a lot in rookie drafts. Those three guys probably going off the board in different order, but all close to each other. Traylon Burks was like the 101, 102 guy. Going into the combine, I think a lot of people are overvaluing that 455 40-yard dash. Drake London, you can't take anything away from him. Good production numbers from last season. He's going to be a first-round pick. Garrett Wilson does everything well, pretty much. Good route runner, good change of direction skills, first-round draft capital. Fifth player off the board here is Isaiah Spiller, running back from Texas A&M. I did a video on him the other day. And even though he didn't compete at the Combine, he still has some good things on tape for us to go off of. Still should get some draft capital. The weird thing that I see here is the sixth pick, Rashad White, Arizona State. Normally don't see him go in the first round. Mock drafts. Been in a lot of them this offseason. I post a lot of them here on the channel. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen him go in the first round. Maybe at the 112. But I know he's had a good Combine. And I know it was pretty good, especially size adjust speed wise, if I remember right. The one thing about him, though, I've heard some talks from like regular draft Twitter, regular draft guys, and a lot of people are pegging him as like a mid to late rounder. And draft capital may not be there. I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to bump him back a bit after the draft, if that's true. He looks like he could be a good backup, but the receiving chops he has does give him some upside. He does show some athleticism. However, putting him ahead of Jameson Williams, Chris Olave, and then Kenneth Walker. They called him Ken Walker here, which is absurd. Ken Walker, Kenny Walker, Kenneth Walker, whatever Walker you want to call him. He should not be down there at 9, considering he's a running back. And that running back value is big time here. He shouldn't even be the fourth running back off the board on the list. But again, Rashad White ahead of those guys is just something you're not going to see in your drafts. I guarantee it. But Jamison Williams at 7 seems like a, a normal price tag for him. Chris Olave got a bump up. Imagine that was from the combine for them. I don't understand Kenneth Walker down at 9. Imagine his value should have jumped up a little bit. I don't get it at all. But I think he just fell in the draft. George Pickens at 10. I see him fall in this range at, at the 10th spot. I also see him go like 201 range. It really depends on who you're drafting with. I think George Pickens earned a little bit at the combine. I think more people are coming around to him. I've heard some things from guys who don't play fantasy, but they're more into draft. They really like George Pickens as well. Jahan Dotson at 11. Interesting spot for him. There's a chance he could be a first rounder. A lot of buzz around here. And I'm, li I'm liking that they did not completely fade David Bell. They got him at the 112. I think this is a great pick. Good value. Athleticism scaring people. But the production's there. The tape's there. The metrics are there. And the 112, I think that's a good range for Bell. 
201, 202, 203, 204. Also good range for him as well. Let's go to the second round, though. Second round. This is where things get a little different. So, first pick, second round, 201. John Mechie. I can see what they were thinking. He's going to get draft capital. Whether we like it or not here on the fantasy side, he's going to get draft capital. He's going to be drafted fairly high. That means he is going to be valued a little bit higher in rookie drafts. 201 might be a little bit of a reach, but I imagine he, there's going to be a, a part of the draft where he does become a value. I think that's a little too rich for my blood. Brian Robson, big, thick running back. There's a chance he gets decent draft capital, but I, I would have some other running backs maybe ahead of him over here. But if the draft capital's there, then you're going to bump him up. I would not have him over Justin Ross. I would have Justin Ross ahead of John Mechie and Brian Robson for sure, especially from what we know in the combine. And Justin Ross, I'm keeping him ranked high, and I'm drafting him high everywhere until the NFL tells me not to. And if the NFL lets him slide to the sixth round, yeah, that that's the tell. But if they draft him third round, second round, yes, I'm, I'm pulling the trigger on him early in the second round. Malik Willis, fourth pick, second round, might be a little expensive in a one QB leagues. Superflex, of course, he's going up high, but I'm seeing him go a little farther down the board in one QB leagues in the second round. Sky Moore, Christian Watson, these guys have been receiving a lot of bumps in value. Sky Moore, I, I feel like. Considering what we saw at the Combine from other guys who talk draft but don't do fantasy, they're very high on Sky Moore too. I watched the draft show of DallasCowboys.com and pretty much just straight draft all through draft season. They're very high on Sky Moore. I could see him get decent draft capital. I, I'm saying second round, early third round. Christian Watson's getting some buzz, good athleticism. You may want to pull the trigger on him. Damian Pierce, interesting. A lot of buzz coming out of the Senior Bowl. I feel like the Senior Bowl buzz put up the value in this draft. I'm not really loving the pick there. Trey McBride, mid-second round. You kind of see him go in this range maybe a little later, maybe like at the 210, 211, 212 spot. What I'm really looking at here is Amir White at 212. I feel like he should be bumped up. I feel like this is a big value there. I'm not against someone drafting him in the first round, even like 112 or something like that, because I know he's going to get the draft capital. Did well at the combine, good collegiate profile, was productive enough, has some tread left on the tires, even though he had those knee injuries. He's, he showed that he's he came back. He even showed that the combine that he came back. I'm bullish on Zamir White, and again, just like Justin Ross, I want to be drafting Zamir White until the NFL tells me not to. Because we've seen enough out of him. So, Zamir White, I'm bumping up. Sky Moore, I'm bumping up for sure. Justin Ross, I'm bumping up. Those are my three targets in this round, too. And as we get deeper into this year's draft, second round, third round, it gets bleak. It gets dark. It gets scary. It, it does not look good. It's not as much sunshine and rainbows as it was just a few weeks ago or before the combine. But let's move down to round three and see what they did. Round three, Alec Pierce. Premium on the combine right there. Premium on there. James Cook, third round. All right for the pass catcher. He's got some speed burst. Might get some draft capital. Draft capital is going to be big for him. Kyron Williams fell. You know what? Round three in a rookie draft. Round four, I think that's fine. He demonstrates that he blocks well. Catch the ball in the backfield. That's going to be big for an NFL team. I could get him on the field still. Getting opportunities to succeed is what matters most for running back, so he still might be good for us. You can't kill him off. You just got to discount him a little bit. Pierre Strong is a guy I'm very interested in. Good collegiate profile. Did well at the combine. I want to get him at this discount round three or later. I'm very interested in him. Jalen Wittermeyer really depends on where he goes in the draft. I'm not into paying premium on tight ends. I'll gladly buy him next year or year after if I'm seeing anything in his progression at a similar price point because they don't jump up in price until they start really hitting. Calvin Austin, I think that's an overdraft. 
He's got some speed, some size, a shorter wide receiver, though. Desmond Ritter is a good value here, considering he ran like a 4-5 something 40. Good speed, Konami code. The Wandale Robinson hate. I know I put out that video the other day talking about his combine metrics, talking about his height and all that, size adjusted speed score. For the second round, especially the middle of the second round rookie drafts, maybe a little high, maybe not. Late second round feels a little good, early third round, because he does have some production. He did break out with two different collegiate programs. He does have some production to his name. He does have some burst on the field. He can do some good things after the catch, play in the slot. He could get that draft capital to give him opportunities. I feel like falling this far in a draft is a little too much of an overcorrection. Now I'm taking up for him. So those guys in the comment section of that video, they better start looking at this because I don't completely hate Wando Robinson. I just am looking for upside and guys who are likely to hit it. Matt Quarrel, this late in round three, and Sam Howell at this late in round three is a good value. I like getting first-round quarterbacks in the third round of one QB leagues because... It's a cheap price tag. Most of the skilled players are not going to hit in the third round, like very few of them. You got a first round quarterback there. You know that you're going to get something out of it. You're talking about guys like Justin Herbert, Josh Allen back in their drafts. I was snagging up Justin Herbert in the third round like crazy. It's almost became a rule for me. It's a, hey, just draft that first round quarterback that falls in the third round, especially mid to late, and just go with it because those running backs, wide receivers, they may look good in that third round, but the odds of them hitting are very slim. At least you got a chance, a good chance, with the quarterback because they're at least going to get the opportunity to at least fail. Deshaun Corbin, running back from Florida State, interesting prospect. He's fun to watch on tape. I actually did a film study on him earlier this year. He's got some burst, got some wiggle. He's going to be an interesting prospect. I don't think he's going to get the draft capital, though, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something crazy. Tyler Batty. Good production this year. Catches the ball in the backfield. Has some speed. Got some burst. But didn't really kill the combine either. So you can't really say he's an elite level athlete. We were hoping for that. But we didn't get it. Round three though is a good place for him. Especially late in round three. Round three gets dark. Round four gets extra dark. There is some values here from this draft. It's not super tight. I can tell you that much. Not the greatest rookie mock that I've seen. But... Honestly, once the draft hits, you're going to see some similar things compared to the consensus now. Like, you're going to see a random running back jump up to the first round because a running back could get overdrafted in a real draft, go to a sneaky, sexy situation. We see this happen a lot in drafts. It could be a wide receiver that gets drafted by the Chiefs in the fourth round or something like that, and everybody goes crazy over it. It could be one of the guys we're not thinking of, and they'd get a bump up value they're all of a sudden getting drafted in the second round that allows us to capitalize and get the players we like who's still holding decent draft capital at a good price tag good value which is what i always love to do just stick with the fundamentals stick with what got you here but i want to thank you for watching the show sticking with me make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out every subscription matters fuels me keep going over this content fuels me keep helping with your fantasy teams and everything else but again I want to thank you, and I'll catch you next time.